Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us talk about the types of linkage. As I discussed, there are two types of linkage, complete linkage and incomplete linkage. So the more the linkage is, the lesser the recombinations will be seen. So let us first talk about complete linkage. So if the genes are located on the same chromosome and they are completely linked to each other, in that case they will always be inherited together. And if the genes get inherited together, the probability of crossing over decreases. So the recombinants are very few, sometimes there is no recombinant at all. And even if they are there, they are extremely less in number. So here no crossing over takes place and if there is no crossing over, there is going to be no recombinations. Now, if no crossing over takes place, then there will be no recombinant, so only parental traits will be inherited. That is, the offsprings which you will see, they will have the parental traits. So, the parental phenotypes will be obtained and there will be no new traits which will get produced. However, this type of linkage is very rarely seen in organisms. Most of the organisms show incomplete linkage, that is, they are linked, but there are few recombinants which get produced. That is, some amount of crossing over do take place. So, complete linkage is very rare. However, it is seen in some organisms. For example, it is seen in Drosophila, that is the fruit fly. So, if you uh, do a dihybrid cross, if you take the example of a dihybrid cross of Drosophila, considering two traits, and what are the two traits that we will consider in the dihybrid cross? One is the wing type and the next trait would be the eye color. Now by now you already know the wing type. The wing can be normal, it can be vestigial. So vestigial is denoted by a small VG and normal wing is denoted by a capital VG. So VG stands for vestigial. So if it is vestigial, it is going to be small VG. If it is normal, it is going to be capital VG. So obviously normal is dominant over vestigial. Similarly, if you talk about the eye color, Eye color can be red or eye color could be purple. So red is denoted by capital R, so purple would be denoted by a small r. So what happens in case of this if, now here we see that what happens is the capital R and vestigial wing, they are li completely linked to each other. So if, you, if this is the chromosome, if this is R and this is VG, they are completely linked to each other. So they will always get inherited together. So what would happen if we perform a cross between homozygous drosophila with homozygous red-eyed normal wing drosophila. So this is what? This is red-eyed and normal wing. So when we cross this red eyed normal winged drosophila with a purple eyed vestigial winged drosophila, what happens? So the only possible gamut that can be formed here is RVG and the only gamut that is possible here is RVG. Right? So what will we get in the F1 generation? So what we get in the F1 generation is the heterozygous RR, VG, VG. So this is going to be red eyed. This is also going to be normal wing, but this is a heterozygous organism. Right? So this is going to be heterozygous. So now if we perform a test cross, so what will happen? So now if we perform a test cross, so in test cross, what do we do? Heterozygous is crossed with homozygous recessive. So this will be crossed with small r, small r, small vg, small vg. So in this case, what are the possible gametes that will be produced? Now in this case, only two gametes are possible that is capital R, capital vg and small r, small vg. And in this case, only one gamete is possible that is small r, small vg. Now when these recombine, what is the final output that we get? So one option is capital R, small r, capital VG, small VG. So this is one type of out offsprings that we can get. The other type of offspring is small r, small VG, small r, small VG. Now if you look at this, you see that this is red eyed normal wing which resembles this parent. This is purple eyed 
vestigial wing which resemble this pattern and you do not get any recombinants. So the recombinants are 0 and the phenotypes which you obtain is in the ratio of 1 is to 1. So there are 50% chances of being like this parent and 50% chances of being like this parent. So here the offsprings are exactly like the parents and there are no recombinants being formed. So this is an example of complete linkage. However, as I said, complete linkage is very rare in organisms. Most of the organisms show uh, incomplete linkage where recombinants are also formed. So you can take for example human beings. In human beings also we get recombinants, right? It is not that uh, the kids resemble exactly like their parents. So you see new traits being present in the kid. So that is all because of recombination. So let us talk about incomplete linkage now. So in incomplete linkage what happens? The genes separate due to crossing over. So now it is not necessary that they have to be together. I mean they prefer to be inherited together but crossing over takes place and as a result some part gets exchanged and as a result there is some separation. So recombinant phenotypes are produced besides the parental phenotypes. Now here also <coughs> the tendency of producing the parental phenotypes will be more. Now how much recombinant phenotypes will be produced that depends upon how much it is linked. The lesser the genes are linked the more the recombinant phenotypes will be produced. So that is the simple concept. So so in case of incomplete linkage, we see that the number of recombinants that is produced here is less than the number of recombinants that is produced in independent assortment. Because in independent assortment, as I said, independent assortment takes place when there is maximum crossing over and that happens when the two the genes are completely unlinked, they are present on different chromosomes or they are very far apart. But in case of incomplete linkage, there is some physical linkage between the two genes but the linkage is not complete. So that is why some recombinants are formed but the number of recombinants will always be less than the independent assortment. So what happens in case of independent assortment? So if you perform a test cross, if you perform a test cross for genes which are not linked, which are unlinked. So in that case, what do we see? The output that we get out of a test cross. Let us suppose you perform a test cross. So how will the test cross look like? So test cross will look like somewhat like this. A heterozygous being crossed with a homozygous recessive. Now as a result of this, this will be able to give you four types of gametes like this. And again, this will be able to give you only one type of gamete. Now when these can combine with any of these and as a result, you will be able to find offsprings somewhat like this, right? So these are all the possible offsprings in this case. So basically, if you see here, so this is like the parent. Again, this is also like the parent, but these two are the recombinants. So they are not like the parents. So basically 50% of them, 50% of the offsprings are the recombinants and 50% of the offsprings are going to be like parents. So each of them has a probability of 25%. So basically in independent assortment you get some like parents, some recombinants, again some recombinants, some like parents and each of them has a probability of 25%. That is what happens in independent assortment. Now what happens in case of incomplete linkage? Now in case now, in case of complete linkage, what happens you know, right? In complete linkage, there will be no recombinants at all. Just now in the previous slide we saw, right? There is, was no recombinant, it was all parent. Now in case of incomplete linkage, what happens is you get some of them as parents and some of them as recombinants. That is there, but the ratio changes. The percentage of recombinants is quite less than 50%. Because in this case, the genes are present on the same chromosome, the genes are linked, but they are not completely linked. Now, this percentage of the recombinants will keep on varying depending upon the extent of linkage between the genes. So, for example, when you take the example of the sweet pea, you remember this sweet pea example when we took, we actually saw the ratio which was actually obtained was 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7. So this ratio actually tells us that it has more of the parental types and very few recombinants. Had this been completely linked, 
what would have been the ratio had it been completely linked it would have been all parental so all parental in the ratio of 1 is to 1 had it been independent assortment it would have been in the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 that is each with 25 percent of possibility and it would have had recombinants as well so the probability of recombinants would have been almost half i mean as good as the probability of the parental types so this is how the ratio matter varies and now i hope you know that why this ratio varies because it all depends upon the linkage so the way the uh, genes are linked will decide how much crossing over will take place and amount of crossing over that takes place decides the number of recombinants that will be formed so this is the concept of complete and incomplete linkage so I think by now you are also clear that to what extent Mendel's principles were correct and what were the modifications or what were the gaps in Mendel's principles. So with this knowledge we get two very important conclusion. One is tightly linked genes show less recombination. Now if the genes are tightly linked, the tightly they are linked that means they are very close to each other, they are on the same chromosome. Tightly linked means complete linkage. So this is the scenario of complete linkage. The more tightly they are linked, there is it is they are nearing towards complete linkage. So there will be less recombination. And the loosely linked genes show more recombination. So the far away the genes go from each other and that is why when the genes become completely unlinked, they show more recombination. So that is when you see the principle of independent assortment coming through. So the tightly linked gene gradually near towards complete linkage. Right? And so in complete linkage, there will be no recombination at all. And the loosely linked genes will gradually near towards principle of independent assortment. So it will near towards independent assortment. And in independent assortment, you have 50% recombination occurrence. So here you have 50% recombination occurrence. Right. So you can just remember this in with uh, I mean, in a very simple way. Let us suppose you are three friends. Three friends are very close to each other. They are always together. They always, I mean, they never go apart. So they are always together. Now, if they are always together, then their chances of recombining, that means their chances of joining some other group of friend is very less. So the tighter the bond is between these three friends, the lesser the chances that any of these will go and join some other friends group. Sure, right? I hope you are getting the point. So these three are closely linked. So the tightly linked these three are. So then they are nearing towards complete linkage. The more tightly they are linked, there will be less recombination. Whereas if they are loosely linked, then their possibility of joining some other group is more. For example, if they are not very closely linked, if this person is loosely linked, so there is a possibility that the person might leave this group of friends and the person might join some other group, right? So when the, he or she joins some other group, a recombination happens because the structure of this group also changes, the group size changes, the size of this group also changes and that is called recombination. So that the same concept applies here. So if the genes are tightly linked, they are nearing towards complete linkage. Complete linkage means no recombination, only parental traits being inherited from one generation to the other. And loosely linked genes means the genes are not at all linked. Either they are on different chromosomes or they are on the same chromosomes but they are far apart. So that is the scenario of Mendel's experiments. So in Mendel's experiments that is how it was and that is why he gave the principle of independent assortment. So the principle of independent assortment of Mendel holds true only for the unlinked genes or the genes which are located far apart on the same chromosome. So this was the concept of linkage and I hope that you have understood the concept. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.